Raise your hand if you've ever had a great idea. Me, me, me. But you didn't write it down. Or you did write it down, but you didn't share it with anybody. Or maybe you did share it with someone, but you shared it in a way that suggested your great idea was mere fluff. Let me tell you about fluff. Anybody here receive a fragile package in the mail before? <laughs> Come to these fun little messes, right? These little bloated styrofoam messes. What do you do with them? You throw them away. I don't need that. It's trash. Don't tell Rocky. <laughs> or maybe you stuff them down in your basement and say, I'm going to use these when I ship a fragile package. <laughs> and you don't. <laughs> you forget about them. That's what happens to ideas that don't contain verbs. We forget about them. When you speak out loud and you speak what you want to do, you can't treat it like fluff. You can't say, I want to learn how to play guitar. I should probably learn a, another language. I'm going to lose some weight one day. I probably shouldn't have those last five pinchos. <laughs> Fluff. Now, raise your hand if you've ever said, I will. And you did. When you speak your goals out loud, there's a different energy behind your words. There's a different measurement to stand up to. It's easy to speak into the fluff, but it takes guts to speak into action. Two years ago, I did just that. I set a goal so big that I couldn't achieve it until I grew into the person who could. And those 10 words, 17 actually, changed my life. I will train to be the next American Ninja Warrior and remember how to love my body. For those of you who aren't familiar with American Ninja Warrior, it's an extreme obstacle course race show where athletes compete to head to the top of Mount Midoriyama. To date, no single person has ever done that. In fact, nobody's ever even completed all six stages. And prior to my run, only one woman had ever even made it to the famous fifth obstacle, the warped wall. So why? Why did a 32-year-old, overweight, full-time professor, and mother of two speak those words out loud? Because my desire to change my life was greater than my fear of failing. So how does one make such a drastic change? First, you speak your goals out loud. You speak them out loud to someone who will hold you accountable, and you say, I will. Two years ago, I weighed almost 200 pounds. I could barely do a single push-up. I was lethargic all the time, chasing my kids around and living my life based on their schedule. I soothed my mediocrity. I soothed it, y'all, with excuses after excuses and Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but Facebook changed my life. One day, while probably taking a BuzzFeed quiz, <laughs> I came across an ad. It was a competition to redefine the female athlete. It was sponsored by Under Armour, and it was called What's Beautiful. They had me at What's Beautiful. You see, it's easier to redefine a word than it is to define our bodies to fit an unattainable ideal. It's easier to redefine the word. So I clicked the link. It asked me to set a goal and to document my journey towards achieving that goal over a 10-week period. And at the end of those 10 weeks, Under Armour would name someone the winner, and that person would be their sponsored athlete, their ambassador. So I went to the site. I typed out my goal. The very first challenge, talk about vulnerability. I was at home in my PJs with this huge afro, and it's like, tell everybody from the mountaintop what you're going to do in a video. And I was like, oh, no. This is not good. So I'm, I'm like holding my afro back. <laughs> and I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm like, I will train to be the next ninja warrior and love my body. I said it. There I said it. I said it to 10,000 women. And hundreds of them reached out to me. They pushed me on the days where I didn't think I could do it. They held my hand on the days where support was the only thing that could pull me through. 
and they cheered for me. Women who do marathons, they eat them for breakfast, were cheering for me after I ran my first mile without stopping. It was one mile, but it was mine. After I did 100 burpees in seven minutes, that was tough. Right? They cheered for me when I traversed my first wall as an amateur climber. During those 10 weeks, I never thought I was going to win. I just wanted to feel good. I wanted to do something with myself. And, and after those 10 weeks, I still couldn't do a single pull-up, but I did feel better about myself. I did. Setting little bitty goals boosted my self-confidence. Redefining beauty uplifted my self-esteem, and my passion for training soared. I was ready for something else. So imagine how I felt when I was actually named the winner. Female athlete. What is it that about the word female that just makes people think that there needs to be a qualifier? We are athletes. We are beautiful. We will step to the challenge. I want to be an ninja warrior. This is going to be a really tough road ahead. Yeah. The injury. Oh. Kiss the cuts. Cause I'm gonna need them. I just did my mile. I didn't stop not one time. 100 burpees, seven minutes. This is for anybody who's coming back from a long time of no exercise. The guns have changed, like all in my shoulders. Can you see that? I feel good. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. I celebrated that victory that day with all 10,000 of those women because they pushed me. They're the ones who made that possible. So I want you to take a minute. Think about what you want to accomplish. What's your big goal? Why are you here? And I want you to write it down. I want you to use I will. And after this talk, after all of these inspirational talks, you can't help but want to share that. Share it with somebody who's going to lift you up, someone who's going to support you throughout your entire journey. So after I won the competition, I had to move on to the next step. I felt really good about where I was, so I was ready. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go be a ninja warrior. Take that. So I Googled American Ninja Warrior Houston. I found Iron Sports and Sam Sam, my trainer. And when I showed up, I showed up in all my Under Armour. I was like, I'm a badass. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, no, I sucked. <laughs> I realized very quickly that this was going to be a really tough road. I could barely do anything. I couldn't traverse ropes. I couldn't traverse walls. I could not do pull-ups. And when he said, you have to do this for every single one, go all the way down. One. All the way down the I line. just felt defeated. But then he said, one day you'll be able to do it. One day you'll be able to. Though. And he was right. Every day that I showed up to train, there was some obstacle I couldn't do. But I chose not to focus on what I couldn't do. Instead, I focused on what I could. That's the second step. Always do your best. Every person has a best, and all of our bests are different. So for me, maybe my best means being on American Ninja Warrior. And maybe someone else's best is learning how to read. Or maybe someone else is learning a new language. Maybe it's learning how to stand on prosthetic legs for the first time. Everyone has a best. And all of our bests, they wax and they wane, just like the moon. Some days your best is your personal record, and other days your best is not that great, but damn it, it was your best that day. So you'd be proud of it. Never punish yourself for not doing a PR. I never punished myself. Instead, I rewarded myself for trying my hardest. And never compare your best to anyone else. Your best is yours and yours alone. So ask yourself, what was your best today? And what are you going to do to make it even better tomorrow? It took a year for me to get to where I am. And the words of my trainer still stay with me. One day you'll be able to do it. But it didn't happen overnight. 
It took nine months of training four to five days a week after an entire year of just strength training. Nine months, four to five days a week. And then it was time to send in my audition tape. I had to send in a four minute tape and tell NBC why I deserved to be on their show. I didn't know that I deserved it. I just knew I had a story to tell. So I sent in a tape that told them about the little goals I set. It told them about the What's Beautiful competition I won and the strength that I gained in just one year of training. So you're probably wondering what happened. Was my daughter right? Was I the next ninja warrior? Did I push a red button, achieve total victory? Let's see. Up next, she's a 33-year-old professor from Houston, Texas, Amber Johnson. This is the woman who completely transformed her body and her life. What an inspirational story. She said when she lost the weight, it had nothing to do with dieting, but it had everything to do with her training for American Ninja Warrior. Once she decided she was going to get in shape and compete, she got in touch with local legend and trainer Sam Sand, who's been helping her realize this dream. He's here rooting her on tonight. It's her first time on this course, and this long grip can be intimidating. A long grip can be tough. Oh! Up wet, but still a smile on her face. Yeah, you know, she's trained so hard to get to this moment. The drop on this long grip is like being on the football field. You know the guy's coming to get you, but he still knocks you out of your shoes. Let's go to Jen, who's standing by with Amber. What did it mean to get to come here and compete? It means so much. It means so much. And it's not about whether you finish or whether you push a button. Just getting the call is so huge in and of itself. But to be able to stand there and feel the energy, it's my reward. It's not about the end. It's about the start. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Amber. I fell, guys. <laughs> I fell on the second obstacle. My run was only 25 seconds. And you know what's crazy? When I left my house in Houston to drive to Dallas, my daughter ran to the door. She told me to roll my, my window down. And she looks at me. She says, put on your seatbelt and don't fall in the water. <laughs> so when I came home, I had to tell her, ooh, mommy fell in the water. She says, I told you not to fall in the water. And I looked at her and I said, well, if only you listen to everything I say. I fell. I fell, you guys, and I have to wait an entire year before I can try again. This brings me to my last point. Embrace your place. Embrace wherever you are in every moment of bestness because whatever you're doing is exactly what you're supposed to be doing and it's going to get you to where you are going. You have to learn from every downfall and pick yourself back up because it's in the momentum of falling and rising that you realize, I can do this. I can and I will do this. We're all here together on this ship for a reason. Embrace those reasons, and all of our reasons are different. Why are you here? What is this voyage preparing you for? Learn from every single lesson that you've had on this ship, because every lesson is a gift, even if pain and failure are your teachers. You have to learn from those lessons. You have to sink into the moment and be present wherever you are, because where you are is preparing you for where you're going. 
where you are is preparing you for where you're going. A lot of people, when they fell, they threw tantrums. They got upset. They cursed. They screamed. I had one girl, she cried for three days. Mad. Why me? So why was I so calm? Why was I smiling? Because I was happy. I was present. I was in the moment. I embraced where I was. I was a winner. I set a goal two years prior that in my head I really didn't believe I could do. And there I was, underneath a sign that said American Ninja Warrior Dallas. I was winning. Didn't matter if I fell on a log. I hate that log, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> I dream about becoming a wood chopper. <laughs> I do. But that's OK. It's OK. Tree hugs. <laughs> Literally, work on it, right? OK. So I want you to ask yourself, what is the world preparing you for? What are you learning right now that's getting you ready for where you're going? What are you going through? How are you feeling? What are you sensing? And how are you taking those things and turning them into tools to make you a better person in your future, to prepare you to fight your your Goliath in the future. I ask myself the same questions, and my answer is every day that I set a small goal and I achieve it is a day that I am doing my best and pushing myself harder. It's a day that I'm getting a step closer to total victory. Every moment where I embrace my place, it's a moment to have clear peace of mind, clarity knowing that, hey, what I went through today is going to make me better tomorrow. So the next time you get a fragile package in the mail, I don't want you to throw it away. I don't want you to leave it to the realm of fluff. I don't even want you to recycle it. Don't tell Rocky. <laughs> I want you to glue it to a sheet of paper. And I want you to write the letters U-C-C-E-S-S -S next to it. What does that spell? Success. One more time. Success. Because that's what your future is if you say, I will. Thank you.